people have learned. And God, we thank you for those lessons today. Boy, it has made us stronger and wiser. God, we're so careful to give you the praise. Now, Lord God, as I go into your word, the word that you've given me to give your people this morning, oh God, I ask that they receive it and that it be planted in their heart and that they may be able to utilize it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And good morning again. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so good to see each and every one this morning. We had a wonderful time last night. Amen. I tell you, it was awesome fellowship last night with the women's department. Amen. This morning, I want you to turn with me to something that's not new, but it's something God has been dealing with me with. And I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And we're going to I'm going to read from the Christian Standard Bible, and it says in the 13th verse, amen, if I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I boast, uh, if I give away all of my possessions, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing, you may be seated. This morning, God has been dealing with me about what is the assignment? What is the assignment? It goes on to say in that fourth verse, love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude. It is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and it does not keep a record of wrong. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Then in the eighth verse, it says, love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. For we now see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then face to face. It went on down in it, it went on down in, to that 13 verse and said, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Say, the greatest of these is love. In Ephesians 5, 1 through 2, it says, this is the King James Version. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Now, family, how can we show love? Right here, right now. When you see your brother and sister overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual, restore them. Love prays for them. In the Amplified Bible, Galatians 6 and 1, it says, Brothers and sisters, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the Spirit, are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness. Keep a watchful eye on yourself so that ye are not tempted as well. Now that's important. A watchful eye on ourselves. There are so many who have said, I would never. 
and they find themselves in a bad situation. I would never, I could say more about that, but God is leading me back to love. Amen. Love compels you, me, and us to get out of our comfort zones and reach out to those around us. Some you may see daily and others you see now and then. And some you may never see again. I believe we are here to make a difference. I believe that. This is the question I want you to think about. Can you love your neighbor as yourself? Because all of this is nothing if you can't love. Can you be concerned about the next brother or sister without talking about them? You know, sometimes we get a, a group started with good intentions. The intentions is to be a prayer group, to pray for those that are in need. But sometimes the enemy creeps in. And those good intention groups turn into gossip groups. And, then, and, and it comes with the guise of, oh, we just need to know what's going on so we can pray a little better. But let me tell you, God would let you know what's going on with, with that person without having a gossip session. If you have the true spirit of God within you. But now, if the intentions are not good, it turns into something else. Can you feel, can you feed someone that's hungry? Can you be that vessel that God is using on the earth? Now, all of us have assignments. Some of them are carrying them out. Some refuse to carry them out. Some are still thinking about it. Some is sitting on the seat of do nothing right now. Some is uh, uh, trying to get it together themselves. Amen. But I could promise you this, that if you start to move towards God and to walk in the destiny and walk in the assignment that God has given you, God is going to clean up the rest of it besides you. Now, let me tell you, you know how sometimes I used to go to a, um, a holiness church. And in this church, we believe that women could not wear pants. Um, we had our dress to our ankles. Um, oh, and you could not perm your hair. And you better not put on any jewelry because now you've gone to hell. Uh, the red was bad. And, and I, I remember when, we, um, when I initially went to that church, I wasn't going to say, I'm not, I wasn't the total opposite of that, but I had to grow into it. And the Tarian services was long, and I thought I was never going to get the Holy Ghost. But the mother stayed with me. And so... When I begin to get the knowledge that God is real and he cleans you up from the inside out instead of the outside in, then it, it, when I went before him and I got real for him, I wore the things that was pleasing to him. No mother had to come and pat me on my shoulder or put a, a skirt or a cloth over my lap because I knew what I needed to do then. Sometimes we try to dress up the outer man before we clean up the inner man. We have to clean up the inner man, and then naturally the outer man is going to be cleaned up. There's no need to look holy when you're not living holy inside. I had a, um, I had a, 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 a mate in college, and she would, she's the one that actually brought me into their church. And when she brought me into their church, she would dress up holy when we walked in the door. She was shot all the way across the church. And when we got out the door, she would put on her lipstick, go put on her pants, and go out with her man. And I was like, hmm, if she saved, I've been saved all my life because I ain't doing none of that. <laughs> So I was like, that can't be right. So I got with the older mothers. And even though I love the system, even to this day, we have communication. I knew that that was something of form and fashion. She was dressing up her outer man, but she wasn't cleaning up her inner man. But when she got it right, I just want you to know she did clean up. Amen. 
Family, it's time with, for no more excuses. People of God, what are we really doing today? Are we being real with ourselves? Are we being real with the Lord? Are we doing what we're supposed to do for him? Do we have the fellowship and the relationship that we're supposed to have with God today? Do we have those things or are we doing it for form and fashion to get the pats on the back? Because let me tell you, no man on this earth have a heaven or a hell to put you in. You have to be real with God and yourself if nobody else. So I'm not saying, oh, you know, you got to be perfect. No, 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 no. This is a hospital. This is where you come to get better. This is where you get the food that you need, the medicine you need, so you can get stronger, so you can get better, so you can really walk in love and not pretend. Amen? So I want you to know, I want you to think about it today. What is your assignment today? Do you have any excuses for our Father? Do you have any excuses for Him? What can you say? What will you say? What will be the excuse that you can give to him for not living out your assignment today? For not walking in love with your fellow man? What could it be? John 3.16 told us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that so whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's no excuse we can give him. He sacrificed and paid it all. The time is now to be about our father's business. Our assignments are here to carry out. Now, I'm going to tell you, there are distractions everywhere. But there is no excuse acceptable. Because when I need something from God, he gives me no excuses. Maybe it's not the way I would like it. You know, we have our own way of thinking how things should be made up. Maybe it's not even the, the time that I want it. Because, <laughs> you know, we want it right now, right away. But I could tell you that he has never failed me. He has never failed me. He has never walked away from me. He has never turned his back on me. When I was hungry, he fed me. Might have been popcorn, but it was food. I didn't have money to pay for it, but he made sure I had it daily. It was the food that they was going to throw out at the student center. And I didn't have any food in my apartment at, at my house. But God made a way. And I didn't go to bed hungry. So I'm grateful. So I'm saying it may not just come the way we want it to come. Maybe it wasn't a full course meal, but I was full. And to this day, I love popcorn. <laughs> Amen. And there's been times when I was near eviction, being put out my house. But God made a way. i never forget I was at school and... You know, I thought I was grown. <laughs> so I, I, I moved out the dorms because I was tired of being bothered with the other people in the dorms. So I'm going to go ahead and get my own place. Had a little job at the student center in the bookstore. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm going to handle this. So <laughs> I went ahead and got this apartment that I couldn't afford. So it was about maybe four months in and I tell you, the eviction notice came, the hours got cut at the bookstore, and I was no longer making ends meet. So the notices started coming, back to back to back to back to back. Oh, you have 24, hour, 24 hours to get out. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm way up here in Birmingham. I don't have no family around me. It's cold outside. Where am I going, Lord? Where am I going? The Lord said, I done made a way. This young lady, didn't know her from Adam. You ever known those people that come and talk to you? They don't even know you, but they talking to you like they know you and they've been knowing you forever. I was like, oh, mm, okay. And it was Rosie. 
And Rosie was like, hi. I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> you know, you don't want to say, I'm going through something right now. Could you just leave me alone for a second? Now, you don't know that the very thing you're trying to shift away, God has already made a way for you through that thing. The very thing you're trying to get rid of. So she, um, she kept talking. She kept talking. She, hey, she kept trying to get in my place. I'm like, girl, no. Uh-uh. Um, uh, no. Finally, she got in. She said, why you don't have no lights? Why you don't have no water? I was like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> now, I'm a private person. I'm very private. So for somebody to get in my house and know that, 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 that set me down. I'm like, oof, jeez. She said, she said, well, what's going on here? She said, well, you can come to my place and take a bath and do all this other stuff. I was like, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I did. And so she said, she said, okay. She said, well, what else do you need? She said, my daddy could take care of all of this. And I was like, your daddy would do this for me? I'm a stranger. She said, my daddy does anything I ask him to do. So I'm going to just go ahead and call him. And he's going to go ahead and send the money. And he's going to take care of this situation for me. I saw, I was like, okay. But he did. He paid everything. I was going to be evicted the next day. And God made a way. So when I tell you, I know God will do what he said he will do. He will do it. I didn't know her. I didn't even want to be in her presence. I didn't want to have a conversation with her. She was too happy and too upbeat for me. I need to be left alone in my misery. But God didn't allow that to happen. And he blessed me to be able to stay in a place where I had no family to go to. I had no one to give me shelter if I needed to. God made a way. So when I tell you that I know he will do exactly what he said he will do, I've been there. He's done that. Amen. I want to invite everyone today just to examine their hearts. Truly look within yourself. If you have anything in your heart that's not like God, ask God to forgive you. Ask him to restore you. You don't have to wait for the prayer line to do that. You can do that yourself every day. Ask God to clean you up. Ask God to change your heart. Tell God, use me. I am the vessel that's here in this earth for you to use me. Because the assignment, don't miss the assignment, is not to open the church. It's not to, to turn on the lights. The assignment is to walk in love. To walk in love with your fellow man. To be steadfast in what you do sincerely for God today. Because I promise you, if you do that, God will make a way for you. He will open doors for you. He will cause men to give into your bosom today. I know you often hear me say that, but I say it because God has done it for me repeatedly. He is the way maker. He is the life giver. He is the healer today. So whatever you need from God today, believe and trust that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or imagine. Don't give up on God because he has never given up on you. God bless you. Hallelujah, everybody. Don't give up on God. We will never give up on you. Apostle says it all the time. And he's your help in present danger. I need a, a deacon up here with a offering plate, please, so we could collect the offering. Hallelujah. Prepare your heart to give. Give, and it shall be given back to you.
in a pressed down measure, shaken together and running over. Hallelujah. 